This is me learning to ride a two-wheeler for the first time, and I did it at three years old. I'm very proud of that, because back in the 1980s, that would have been a very young age. But now, some kids learn to ride two-wheelers when they're like 18 months old, and we have balance bikes to thank for that. And balance bikes are a relatively new development over the course of bicycle history. Balance bikes have completely revolutionized the way that we teach kids to ride bicycles, but a lot of kids still learn on training wheels. I did, or did I? <laughs> no, I don't recall learning to ride a bicycle on training wheels. Actually, I learned the same way you probably did, with one of your parents running frantically behind you to make sure you don't crash into anything. Don't go into the car! Whoa. I just learned how to pedal my bike on training wheels. And honestly, that's all I think they're good for. Now, before we get into the meat and potatoes of this, let me be really clear. I'm not against training wheels. You can put them on any kid's bike and instantly make it rideable. Anything that gets a kid on a bicycle, I am for. And so I don't wanna see training wheels go away. I don't think that you're a bad parent if you're teaching your kid to ride a bike with training wheels. But if the goal is to teach them to ride a two-wheeler as fast as possible, there are several better ways to do it and they don't even involve purchasing anything additional. So I did in fact install training wheels on my BMX bike so that I could demonstrate a few concepts today. Didn't really fit on the 14 millimeter axles, had to do some modifications. And although I had to hack these up to install them on my BMX, you can see here that the mounting holes are oblong. You can actually move the training wheels up and down, you can bend them, you can do whatever you have to do to get them a little bit off the ground because the thinking is, and this is what my dad did, you can just move the training wheels up and up little by little, eventually the kid will forget they're there and then one day you can take them off. But really, all the learning takes place that day where you're running behind your kid at top speed. Now some of you may be thinking, well, what's the problem with all that? You just explained why training wheels are great for teaching a kid how to ride a bike. Well, let me explain how a bicycle actually stays up. As you can see, you don't even have to be on a bicycle for it to stay up. Yeah, as long as a bicycle is in motion, it will stay up on its own. And if you ask most people why, they're gonna say it's the gyroscopic effect of the wheels. And that's not true. The gyroscopic effect of the wheels has some effect once the bike is going fast, but at the speed that I just caught that bicycle, the gyroscopic effect of the wheels have little to no effect on the bicycle's stability. It's actually the geometry of the bicycle that keeps it upright. So we actually talked a little bit about steering geometry in another video. I'm not gonna go too in depth, but I am gonna say, if you lean the bike to the right, the wheel turns right. When you lean a bike to the left, the wheel turns to the left kind of automatically, and that is by design. The steering geometry is designed so that when you lean the bike either way, the wheel will automatically turn. Now it is true that not all bikes will stay up on their own if you just cut them loose, but they're all still, based on the same concept, lean and turn. And once you've built up that muscle memory, that balance of leaning and turning the bike, you can ride just about anything and it works the same way. This sucks. Now also at play, we have something called centrifugal force. So if I'm turning the bike and going around a circle like this, it is kind of pushing the bike towards the outside of the circle. That's why I have to lean this way to keep the bike up. If I'm riding around in circles, you're gonna notice that basically the entire time I'm leaning inwards because there's a force pulling me out. And so that fact is very important because if you were to keep your bike perfectly upright, and steer and not tilt the bike, it would immediately just flop over the other way. And that's not how a bicycle works. The way a bicycle works is you lean first and then you turn into the lean to counteract it. And so when you're learning to ride a bike on training wheels, you can only tilt the bike so far. And what often happens is kids get used to just keeping the bike upright and turning and relying on the training wheels to keep them upright. So even once they learned how to ride a two-wheeler, they had to break that habit. And even if you move the training wheels up and give them more distance from the ground, they're still limiting. And when you do try to lean the bike and the training wheel contacts the ground, it actually lifts the back wheel up. And so kids get it drilled into their head not to do that if they want to 
to stay stable. And so the only thing a kid is learning on a bike with training wheels is how to pedal the bike. They're not really learning how to steer properly. They're learning that when they turn right, the bike goes right, but they're not really learning how to corner. They're learning how to pedal and that's the part that has basically no consequences. The part that's important, balancing, keeping the bike up, they learn with no training wheels whatsoever. That's backwards. That's the part they should be learning first. They should learn to pedal once they know how to keep the bike up. And so what if instead of buying a bike with training wheels on it, you bought that same bike, took the training wheels off, and also took off the pedals? Okay, so I've removed both pedals from the bike and now what we'll do is adjust the seat height so that I can firmly place both my feet on the ground. And now, as you can see, I can just walk the bike around. I have no training wheels on it, yet I'm at no risk whatsoever because my feet are always on the ground. And what you'll find if you do this to your kid's bike and let them mess around on it, it's within about 10, 15 minutes, they start leaving their feet off the ground for longer and longer thus incrementally learning how to balance a bike. And once you've got that part down, you know, the important part, you can put the pedals back on the bike and just start riding it. There's no leap of faith, there's no risk, your feet are always there to catch you. Not a week goes by that I don't see a family at the park with a pedalless bike. This is not something I'm bringing to light today. A lot of people know that this is an easier way to teach your kid to ride a two-wheeler. And since the turn of the century, we've seen an entire category of bikes, balance bikes, rise to prominence. These are designed specifically with no obstructions in this area so that kids can kick them easy. They're designed with no sharp edges so that if a kid falls on it, they won't get hurt. The geometry is such that they're really low and easy to make it so a kid can contact the ground. And they're super duper small because now, as I said, 18 month olds are riding them. In fact, bicycles like this can't even accept training wheels. There's no way to mount a training wheel to this rear axle without a whole hodgepodge of stuff from the hardware store. Because this is a kid-specific bike company, they expect that the parents are either gonna take the pedals off or the kid already knows how to balance because they've been on a balance bike for a year and a half. And I suspect that if you're a bicycle enthusiast, you already know and agree with everything I just said, but it's still not common knowledge. I still see kids riding with training wheels everywhere, and yes, training wheels can be fun. They allow you to pedal the bike without knowing how to balance. You can just get up and go right away, but they still shouldn't call them training wheels. Training wheels also have a tendency to be pretty bad off-road, even on something like gravel. They get hung up on things, they hold you back, on a balance bike, you can pretty much take it to the dirt immediately, and you don't really have to worry about the dangers of it too much because your kid's feet are right on the ground. And I've seen kids in diapers with binkies in their mouths just scooting around on balance bikes like there's no tomorrow. And so if your kid's two years old and maybe they have a tricycle, maybe they have nothing at all, and you're considering getting them their first bike, I would strongly consider a balance bike. This is a pretty fancy balance bike and it's priced as such, but they sell balance bikes on Amazon for like 40 bucks. And even those are a better way to teach your kid to ride a bike than to have them riding around on training wheels for years and years and waiting until they're big enough to actually fit on a pedal bike. Now, I wanna reiterate, I have nothing against training wheels. If your kid's having a blast on their bike with training wheels and you're going to the park as a family and riding everywhere, only positive things can happen from getting out on a bike and having fun. But if your goal is to learn to ride a two-wheeler as quickly as possible, or you're an able-bodied 40-year-old who has never ridden a two-wheeler, take the training wheels off, take the pedals off, kick around, or use a balance bike. I hope you found this video informative. I hope you learned something. And if you didn't, I hope you at least found it entertaining. Thanks for riding with me today, and I'll see you next time.